The JSC, which operates Africa's largest stock exchange, said diluted headline earnings per share totaled 284.4 cents in the six months to the end of June, compared with 229.7 cents a year earlier. Revenue for the period rose 7% to 667.9 million rand, helped by a 5% increase in equity trading uh, revenue and a 44% increase in revenue from currency derivatives. JSC plans to move to a new trading platform next year to ramp up speed and avoid technical glitches that have halted trade a handful of times over the last 16 months. JC market cap 5.7 billion, price earnings 14.4, dividend yield 6.2. And so let's start on that dividend yield. 6.2 sounds spectacular, but that uh, 2 rand 10 cents announced today is in essence it's a one-off. They put the same what they gave us last year for the entire year. They're sitting on a whole bunch of cash. I suppose they could have done the old route, which is the share buybacks, etc. I'm a fan of just give me the money, and, and seemingly the JC went that route as well. Yeah, and they need to keep a certain amount of cash on hand. I think it's about four months' worth of expenses. Yeah. But this business does generate a lot of cash, and that's kind of one of the key uh, tenets to the investment thesis is that it is a great cash flow generator or free cash flow generator. And they can almost, in a sense, I mean, when it's, it's, it's ticking along, et cetera, and it's what they're doing now, they've done huge development and the like. I, they just sit there and take the money every day. We and you and the viewers are out there are, are going click, click and making the trades. They just take a little bit every time. Sure. I mean, I think it's a difficult business to value because it's very dependent on volumes. Even they say that it's impossible to forecast, you know, in terms of uh, their prospect statement um, because you just don't know where volume is going to be from one month to the next. Mm -hmm. This business trades on about 11 and a half times forward earnings. Um, I don't think it's worth that. Um, a, because you can't predict. There's very low predictability in earnings. And two, I think the investment thesis also rests on two other things. One is that it's a monopoly. Um, and two, that there's consolidation in global uh, equity markets or exchanges. Um, and I think both those assumptions possibly might not hold water anymore. It's very easy to compete against the JSC. You can see that in the equity derivatives business. Mm -hmm. It's competing very aggressively with um, CFDs, for example. There's no reason why another or well, third party can't come along and start competing against them in the cash equities market as well. We've heard rumors, certainly I've heard rumors, about a CFD exchange looking to open sometime in the second half of this year, and we're already two months into it. But Absolutely. The JSC has a huge burden in terms of regulatory costs that it has to undertake. There's an implicit kind of understanding that perhaps well, it will be allowed to maintain its monopoly, but um, I don't think that's the case. So you might have it competing against people that don't have to do any regulation. Um, and then again, I think uh, this consolidation theme in global exchanges is, is kind of, you know, out the window now. I mean, I think, uh, yeah. yeah, with so much of the potential consolidators experiencing kind of uh, the global financial crisis firsthand, I think that this the kind of the M&A premium that's in the share might come out. So I think the JSE possibly could get derated from here. Um, and therefore, it might not be as great an investment as people think. It's quite fascinating. You talked about volumes, and it's really volume-based when you look at um, the, the profitability of the JSE. We see uh, record volumes being hit constantly and we know that happened last week is not reflected in these numbers clearly uh, but we've had very strong volumes and this is on the back of increased liquidity on a global level how do you think this is going to play out for the JSE well I think it's on the back of increased volatility around the world if that volatility continues then yeah, you, know, you would expect to see increased or continually high volumes but again you know next month it could get very quiet really the JSE is um, an out the money call option on another bull market. It does very well when private clients are, are in the market and actively trading. That's where they make the margin on the low value trades. Um, and also make, make money in the new listings. So and the new listings, of course, we know initial public offerings have <coughs> been very slow since uh, I think the I crash. read that there have been five new listings and eight delistings. Yeah. So they're going backwards. Let's cross across to Jonathan. He's got some, some charts there. Jonathan, I mean, what we, what we can plainly see with this is a stock that was doing wonderful, looking all great, and uh, certainly come roaring back to earth with a fair bit of, of, of speed there. Yeah, Simon, I think the whole trend has changed. I mean, you saw the, the big uptrend from 2009 lows to the peaks of the 2011, the first quarter of 2011. 
Uh, the two peaks over here, which is commonly known as the double top formation, was the actual reversal formation of the uptrend. And it really took up uh, some pace on the downtrend in March this year when it broke through the 2000 and, uh, or the two year support line. But what's interesting to note is what is happening at the moment. This, busy, this, this consolidation area, which is actually another formation, but it's not a reversal formation, it is a continuation pattern, which means that the prices should break down um, in, uh, in the same direction as it entered that pattern, which is, which is obviously on the way down. Uh, what we see there, I and mean, again, uh, the red line I'm assuming is your 200 day and the support, uh, double breach of both of those. I mean, at, at that point, you should have known if you were a technical analyst that this was kind of like in the immediate term game over for JC in terms of share price. It's going to go weaker. Well, correct. I mean, and actually, the, the traders should have known before by the actual reversal formation of the double top. Um, and also, even at these levels, uh, it's a good time to, for investors to actually leave the stock um, as there's a constant uh, demand price for, for the JSC. But as uh, sellers are coming more and more into the market, they become more and more aggressive, which will then saturate the buyers mm. and the, and the JSC then drops some more. Tell me, Simon, with regards to uh, the performance of the JSC Limited's share price, is it linked to what we see overall in the JSC all share in any way? Uh, is there some kind of correlation that can be drawn? No, I, I, I haven't looked at it recently. I, I tried it a, a while ago and couldn't find anything. I really liked Anthony's comment that it is a, an out-the-money call option on the next bull market. When we get the next bull market, things go crazy, people pour into the market, companies pour into the market, and the JSC's printing press works over time. And of course, in my introduction, I did mention that we know that we've seen some technical glitches. It hasn't been overall for the market, but also for Safix, and I know that you have... Uh, yeah, some <laughs> they, they, they've certainly had those. some issues on, 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 on the suffix side, which is a futures exchange. And the issue is really quite simple. It goes down. And that brings, you know, trading is, is a risky endeavor. You're managing risk. Unfortunately, when you're then unable to trade, it brings a level of uncertainty and risk to it that, that's completely out of culture and unmanageable. Um, and and it's, it, it, in fact, it has gone down once when I was in a position, but fortunately it went to my favor. It can make it quite spooky. Okay, so Anthony, also, I mean, you talked about it being a monopoly. Uh, some say that this is a positive element, and also the fact that it owns Beta. Yeah, I mean, I think it. And you see it as more of a negative, if I'm not mistaken. That's well, what you were alluding I to. I think that's the reason why it has a high rating is because people believe it's a monopoly. But I think that's perhaps not correct. You know, and I think the evidence that I suggested was that um, it's competing very aggressively, and they make comment to it in their announcement today that um, you know in the, in the over-the-counter derivatives market e equity derivatives market with regards to African expansion the Africa board we know that it's received a lot of criticism because it actually hasn't seen uh, many companies listing on the Africa board uh, I spoke to Nikki New Newton King a little earlier and she was talking about the fact that momentum is being gained when it comes to the Africa board and the JSC is working very closely with African bosses is that a point of optimism for you yeah I think so I mean I think that if they can be play a regional consolidation role, I think that uh, would be a, you know, a positive thing for the company. Um, but I think that will only start to gain momentum once exchange controls are lifted. Yeah. I think that's a real barrier that they have to get through. Okay, hot or not for you, Anthony? Not. Not hot. Yanatan. <laughs> not hot. Simon, <laughs> do you yeah. own? No, JSC I, don't. I, I used to really, really like the JSC, but I'm not sure where their future growth comes from. To Anthony's point, that you know, they 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 they, they, are, they haven't got control of it. They took over Bisa, they took over Suffix, they bulked up. I'm not seeing where the future growth is coming from. And if anything, I think we're probably into into declining volumes um, with the odd spurt of, of, of panic. I'm going to hang on to the comment that it's a out the money call option on the next bull market. We'll wait for that. Okay, so let's delve into Royal Buffer King Platinum. The company reported a 20 percent drop in first half profit hit by higher operating costs. The group said it expected further cost increases. The mid-tier producer of Platinum Group Metals said diluted headline earnings per share for the six months to June totaled 105 cents from 132 cents a year earlier. This was at the top end of the company's forecast made last month. Uh, market cap is 9.2 billion, price earnings 33, dividend yield zero. Anthony, we're used to seeing the gold miners come out with a record rand gold price and, and, and go backwards. I'm not used to seeing it from the platinum guys. I mean, I, I, there were some extenuating circumstances, etc. But I mean, this is the sun is shining on them, and you, they need to be printing money at this point in the cycle. Yeah, well, I agree with the comment at this point in the cycle. I think that the platinum price needs to certainly go much higher for them to maintain margins because cost inflation is out of control. Um, you know, there is a, 
a, th a thesis out there that was suggesting that the platinum miners don't experience exactly what the gold miners have experienced mm -hmm. in the last decade. You know, um, increasing costs, declining grades, um, and you know, increasing safety issues, uh, electricity you know out of control, electricity costs out of control. And unless the platinum price goes significantly higher, you're going to start to mm -hmm. see them battling to generate cash. Um, and one would, in that kind of environment, would suggest that the obvious trade then would be to be long the physical and short the producers, like it has been such a good trade in, in the gold sector. But you know, there's nowhere else really in the world where platinum is produced. So you would think that, that the platinum price will always be slightly ahead of the marginal cost of production. Mm -hmm. In other words, for people to think that, you know, to, for the, ins the incentive price for new production to come online, the platinum price would have to be higher than it is now. Mm. So I think the market is kind of discounting a surplus of about 500,000 ounces this year in platinum. But as motor vehicle production picks up, as the global economy uh, you know, recovers, you, shot, you should start to see the platinum market go into deficit you would expect in that kind of environment the platinum price to go higher and these companies to do better. Okay, so Jonathan, uh, I'm sure it must have been tough for you to plot uh, Royal Buffer King Platinum, but tell us about the, the technical analysis investment case. Well, this is a very Platt. difficult case, uh, Lainey, because uh, you know, technical analysis, uh, uh, we, need, we need a sufficient amount of data to make a, a, fair, a, a forecast or an assumption of a, of a particular stock. And in this case, uh, we've only got to use data, not even enough data to form a 200-day moving average. So I would be more reluctant to trade on the technical side and I'd be more with the fundamental side of this company and be looking at that side of, uh, side of things rather than trading on how much, Jonathan, how much data would you ideally want? Two years? We probably more? want around a three-year, four-year data. I mean, the more data, the better it mm -hmm. is because we can get a good sense of who's been trading it and the psychology that is going on between the buyers and the sellers. Uh, in this case, it's still just too early to uh, to define this. Notwithstanding, it is trading at its low. <laughs> well, so absolutely. This is the thing I wanted to actually, I don't think it takes an Einstein or a you know, technical analyst expert uh, yeah. to take a look at that graph and obviously it's it's going one way. And I think also this is one of the cases where you know, you've got to follow the trend, the trend's your friend. Okay, so. <laughs> well, not if you're long in this case. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I mean, Anthony, you, 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 you talk about expansion and the like. These guys, Robert for King, they're looking at, they've got a number of projects on the go. 11.6 billion capital expenditure up until 2017. I, I look at that and think that is a humongous amount of money, which frankly they don't have. It's more than their market cap. I'm sure they've got plans for it. But this sort of headlong pursuit, I suppose is what mining is about. You've got to constantly be getting new mines, new shafts, new etc because otherwise eventually one day you're a company with a hole in the ground. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, first point is that two thirds of their capex is funded out of existing cash flows. Mm -hmm. um, it remains to see where the other third is going to come from. So probably from the market. Um, but I think this is a fairly well run business. It's um, production was in line, although volumes are down, grades were up. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, the other way around. Recoveries offset low grades and um, tonnage. Uh, costs are higher, um, but the pro projects are looking as that they are somewhere out, but are on track. So there is growth here. The valuation, can I think it's on a forward P of about 18, unwinding rapidly to 10. Um, you know, if you like kind of small cap platinum miners, this is probably the one to look at. Well, this is what I wanted to ask you. Do you have exposure to platinum stocks? We do, just sure. through Northern. Through Northern pl Platinum. Tell us about the, the, the play between the small cap space and the bigger platinum counters and what the investment case is, because we've spoken about it before when it comes to the overall uh, mining sector, that the smaller companies ov obviously have a whole lot more risk that is uh, needed to be taken into consideration. Sure. We think that Northern's attractive because we think that there's going to be consolidation um, in the platinum sector. We think that ENRC, which is a Kazakhstani London listed company, owns 14.21% of Northern, and that stake is up for sale. ENRC is in a bit of trouble at the moment. Uh, you know, Lonman is 25% is owned by Extrata. We think that Implax is looking for growth. If Zimbabwe collapses, which is possible, you know, Implax becomes an ex-growth company. Yeah. So we would think that some of the better small cap assets, in, uh, platinum assets, are likely to be bought out. 
Uh, we've seen uh, you know, some pickup in M&A, small cap mining M&A with Goldwine, with Metrix. We think this is likely to continue into the small cap platinum sector. Um, whether Royal Buffett King is, is taken out, probably unlikely. I think there's an apartment kind of almost poison pill with Anglo mm -hmm. Platts. Um, but I mean, it's interesting to yeah. see how this develops in time. Hot or not? Um, I'd be lukewarm on it. Lukewarm. Okay. And what would make it hot for you then? <laughs> <laughs> if I start to see the platinum price rise significantly, okay. or the rand platinum price, that's important. Yeah. Okay, Jonathan, your the, your trend the trend is your friend. <laughs> At this stage, I'm sticking with the you. fundamentalist. <laughs> <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> oh, I am. Yeah. Converted a technical analyst. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Simon, hot or not for you? I'm going to go with the not. I, I, I just, I, it, it didn't blow me away. It didn't excite me. Mm. I'm getting less and less excited about mining stocks, particularly in South Africa. Okay, now uh, we know that gold has been shooting the lights out, uh, hitting a record level of $1,813 a fine ounce. Jonathan uh, has picked gold as his preferred play, it seems. You've got some. Well, not a not a preferred to, play to back uh, this up. Yeah, not a not a preferred play. It's just it's just just to make people aware of what is actually happening with the gold yeah. price. I know there's a big hype in the market at the moment that uh, that gold's at record highs above eighteen hundred dollars an ounce. Um, you know, it moved, the move from sixteen hundred dollars to eighteen hundred dollars was was just in five weeks. But uh, what, what's very interesting as far as the gold price at the moment is that it's extremely overextended yeah. on the upside. And we would normally, if we can find a chart over here, we would normally <laughs> it's find... It's about to come <laughs> up, I've been told. So you just carry on telling us about the investment case. Basically, we were looking at a correction in the gold price. Here, here it is. Go. Okay, great. Um, basically, from the chart, I want to just to point out a couple of things. Number one, the indicator that we have at the bottom... Um, it's, a, it's a very different kind of indicator because it actually measures the elasticity of prices on how high prices are trading above their rising 200-day moving average. And what we normally find is that they, they are contained within certain parameters. And this is the third time at the moment where, where, where the prices are around the 22% above the 200-day moving average. This is the third time in the history of the bull market since it started in 2001 um, that it is at these highs. And each time we got to those, that kind of stretch above the 200-day moving average, we had a very decent correction. The first one being in the commodity sell-off in 2008, which was a 30% correction. Uh, the second one being in the 2009-2010 correction area, which was a 15% correction. And we're kind of at these levels at the moment. But what's very interesting to point out is that we are also just entering in the gold season. So this, yeah. could, this could stay at these levels for, for the next three so or four months. So in other months. words, buy at these levels. If you haven't been part of the, the, the bull run, then you've No, if you have not been part of this last rally from yeah. 1600 to 1800, I would not be right. looking to okay. enter into new positions. And I would, if I do have positions in this, I would be looking to run this as, as long as possible. Okay, point is me asking you whether gold is hot or not. Gold's going up, I just don't like it. Okay, Anthony. <laughs> Um, yeah, we think that gold will probably go higher from here. There's a lot of um, devaluation around the world. This yeah. is the only currency that's not been devalued. 